kid, I need school supplies. And I need vittles for my critters. And I need vittles for you critters. <laughs> I reckon I might as well draw out enough money to last us a month or two. I reckon ten dollars will do it. I never could sleep a wink with all that money in the house. <laughs> I told you not to drive with that hangover. Anybody hurt? I don't think so. Well, no harm done, huh, kid? Well, not to your car, but you kind of bent our bumper. I reckon I can straighten it out, though. <laughs> Atta boy. You going in the bank, old timer? Yes, sir. I was planning to. Well, come with me. They know me here. Maybe I can do you some good. I uh, hope you'll forgive my stupid husband. <laughs> Had a bad day yesterday with the nags and he got stoned last night. So now he's got to borrow some money to pay off his bookie. <laughs> What's a bookie? A little rat called Sam the Collector. Oh, Jim could only stay away from the horses. Your husband likes horses, does he? He loves them, especially losers. Ken <laughs> says a man who likes animals can't be all bad. Here comes Uncle Jim, Granny. Well, yeah, let's be on the way. Bye, ma'am. Glad there was no harm done. Yeah, so am I. What happened to you? Fall down in there? Shut up and ask for it. That old geese is worth $35 million. What? Faint. We'll sue him for a bundle. <laughs> Case of Johnson versus Clampett. Are the plaintiffs ready? We are, Your Honor. Are the defendants ready? <laughs> uh, Mr. Clampett. Yes, sir? Please rise when addressing the court. Yes, sir, your courtship. To your honor. Oh, just call me Jed. <laughs> Mr. Carter, let me warn you that any attempt at humor will be dealt with severely. You're being sued for $100,000. Do you consider that funny? No, sir. Very well. Are you represented by counsel? Am I what? By who? You have an attorney. A lawyer. Oh, no, sir. I see. You're appearing in pro per. Do you have any objections? Uh, no. Not hearing no objection, I'll permit your defense. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> well, the plaintiff will make his opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Although my clients, the Johnsons, are really in no condition to appear today, I have persuaded them to come to court so that your honor can see the carnage wreaked by this criminally careless family of hoodlums. Oh, excuse me, young fella, but our name ain't hoodlum, it's Clampett. That's all except Granny, she's a Moses, and uh, Jethro, uh, he's a Bodine. He's my cousin Pearl boy. Pearl's back home right now with Jethro and his sister trying to get her married. She's 18 and still single. That is enough. That's the way my cousin Pearl feels. A girl passes 18 and her chances of getting a husband. Mr. <laughs> Clampett, will you please be quiet? Now, I'm going to excuse this outburst because apparently you're unfamiliar with court procedure. However, one more infraction and I will hold you in contempt. You be seated. <laughs> Proceed, Counselor. As I was saying, Your Honor, I have prevailed upon my clients to appear today, although at the cost of great personal suffering to themselves. Baylor, <laughs> if you please. And the people that run into us. It sure is. What do you reckon happened to them? I'm terrible by the looks of them. Seeking comfort of them. 
Your Honor, protect my clients from these ruffians. You've got a terrible memory for names. Please clamp it, sit for a Get Mr. Clamp. I declare you in contempt of this court. And I'm going to give you a fine of $100. Well, thank you, but I didn't do nothing to earn no $100. <laughs> The fine of one hundred dollars is suspended. Now, please take your seats. Kid, where's the hundred dollars he promised you? Didn't you hear him, Granny? The judge spended it. What right he got spending your hundred dollars? Order in this court. <laughs> the attorney for the plaintiffs will proceed. Your Honor. The maimed and broken bodies of my clients speak more eloquently than any words of mine in condemning the criminal actions of this lawless family. What do you call us that time? Lawless? I know a family named Lawless. Awful nice folks. Raised pigs. <laughs> you will prove, Your Honor, that on the day and date set forth in the complaint, said defendants did willfully and maliciously crash into the plaintiff's car, inflicting upon the bodies of the plaintiffs numerous and grievous injuries, for which we ask the court to award damages in the amount of $100,000 to said plaintiffs. He can't even remember the Johnsons. He keeps calling them the plaintiffs. You know two ways about it. When it comes to recollecting names, that young fella's pitiful. <laughs> I want you to tell the court in your own words exactly what happened. Well, Mrs. Johnson and I had just driven up to the bank where I hoped to borrow some money from my favorite charity, the Horse Lovers of America. <laughs> and although we have been married for 20 years, Mrs. Johnson and I are still very affectionate. <laughs> in your testimony, Mr. Johnson. Well, being affectionate as we are, we sat in the car for a few moments to speak of our love. I love you, Jim Johnson. I love you, Mabel. What other man would borrow the money to help those poor old horses on their way to the glue factory? I do what my heart tells me. Mabel! What is an angel? There's an old truck leaning down the street out of control. Oh, Jim! Thanks for that! Well, have no fear. I'll protect you, darling. <laughs> and that's the last I remember, Your Honor. Those monsters crashing into us in an alcoholic stupor. Oh, please. Court is recessed for ten minutes. Who you reckon smacked into them people like that? I don't know, but they was driving something called a stupor. What do we drive, Jethro? I ain't sure, but I, I think it's called a studs. <laughs> if we wasn't there, we could have helped them. <laughs> Excuse me, mister. How do you get to the playground? Playground? Oh, yes, sir. He just called recess. <laughs> For my poor Jim's sake, I was glad he was unconscious so that he didn't have to see the worst part. <laughs> Would you describe what you mean by the worst part? Well, you see, the impact threw my husband out of the car. There he lay on the street, broken and bruised. My precious darling. <laughs> Did those insensitive beasts care? No. They actually seemed happy about it. Let's back up and hit him again. Yeah, that one about knocked him five feet in the air. <laughs> Why don't you learn how to stay out of people's way? You girls, look what you've done to my husband. I'll bring him around. If this don't bring him around, he's dead. <laughs> Precious lips had never before touched alcohol. Your Honor, uh, please, sir, Mr. Judge. Yes, Mr. Clifford. 
Do you wish to question Mrs. Johnson? Oh, no, sir. That poor woman's been through trouble enough. I just want to say that me and my family here is right good at tracking and trailing and hunting. And we'd be right pleasured if you'd let us go out and hunt down them rascals that was so mean to the Johnson. Clampett, <laughs> do you expect the court to take those remarks seriously? Well, I reckon I did brag a little too strong on us, but uh, if we can't catch him, we got a hound dog named Old Duke. He can follow a trail a month old. That's right, Why, you just give Old Duke the scent, he can't after it. Is it possible that you people don't realize that you are the accused? What do you mean? You are the folks who caused these injuries to the Johnsons. Us? Who says so? <laughs> they do. That's a dad blame lie. Wait, what is he even fighting? They let's restrain these people. What do you mean, we're straightening you? Now, you want to fight? You want to fight? You want to fight? You want to fight? This is a heck of a place to spend recess. <laughs> that fella said he put us in here to cool off. It's hotter in here than it is in there. Well, there's one good thing. He's going to give each one of us a hundred dollars. Fine. That's what I say. Fine and dandy. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you look like you're counting hairs on a hog's back. What you studying on? I'm studying on this whole situation, Granny. Why would the Johnsons haul off and say we'd done something that we didn't? Well, maybe they seven to get the money. Maybe they tits. I agree with Ellie. way I got it figured, that accident they had knocked their memories loose. I could have. The way they's bandaged up, they must have took some awful hard knocks. Granny, supposing you make some poultices for the Johnsons. Then uh, that'll draw the herd out of their heads and they'll be able to remember what smashed into them. I'll do it, kid. And I'll swamp up a great big dose of retchweed tonic. There ain't nothing like retchweed to get you speaking straight. All right, folks. Judge adjourn court till after lunch. And then he wants you all back in that courtroom on your very best behavior. He said he'd suspend your $100 fines. There he goes, spending our money again. <laughs> I'm going to ask the court for a judgment by default. Those hillbillies aren't coming back. They probably left town. Hope we didn't keep you folks waiting. We hurried the best we could. Didn't even stop to eat. <laughs> or a piece over at our place. We've got a lot of fixing to do. And you're going to feel a heat if we're going to have you done with you. How dare you threaten my clients? <laughs> Bad. Quiet and down, little man. Ain't nobody threatening nobody. They're back, Your Honor. All rise. You can uncover the bridge, but keep the lid on the big pot. Well, how about the kids? They're just as good coal. <laughs> Smells good, don't it, Judge? We'd be right pleasure to have you join us. Everybody, we got plenty. <laughs> Thank you. That is very nice of you. Oh, not at all. You realize how long you've kept this court waiting? Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Judge, but we'd done the best we could. Granny was working like a whirlwind, baking possum, cooking grits, making tonic, and fixing poultices. I am not interested in what Granny has been doing. I wouldn't rile her up if I was you, Judge. Not on an empty stomach. Granny gets right ornery when she ain't eat all day. I am also not interested in her dietary idiot's increases. Bev, remove that food from this courtroom. Hold on! Please hungry. That's your own fault for being late. I wouldn't say too much about being late if I was you. This is the second time today you've come in here in your nightgown. Uh, tell me, Jethro, do you like to drive that old truck? Oh, yes, sir. Do you like to drive fast? Oh, yes, sir, but I'm Just always... answer the question, yes or no, and tell the truth. How do you like to drive fast? Uh, yes, sir. Were you driving fast the day you crashed into the Johnson's car? Oh, no, sir. Well, were you driving slowly when you crashed into their car? No, sir, uh, that's, that's always... Thank you. But, but I'm... Step down, please, next witness. 
Granny, I understand that you make very good moonshine whiskey. <laughs> I call it my rheumatiz medicine. <laughs> but it is uh, quite uh, potent, uh, quite strong. Well, you don't want to stand too close to a fire when you uncork it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, uh, now then, Granny, do you sometimes carry a jug of this rheumatiz medicine around with you? Take it on trips, say? Eh? Only when I get my twinges. <laughs> well, were you having twinges the day you and your family crashed into the Johnsons? No, and we didn't... That's all. Thank you. <laughs> now then, Ellie Mae, when the old truck here crashed into the Johnsons' car, would you show me just where you were sitting? Well, I was sitting right there. But we didn't... That's all. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, how many guns do you have in your home? Well, yeah, the granny shotgun, and Jethro's lever action, my pistol, my squirrel rifle. Uh, you needn't go on, Mr. Clampett. That's uh, quite an arsenal you have. Thank you. <laughs> You're used to carrying a gun, aren't you? I've been toting a squirrel rifle since I was knee-high to a jackrabbit. <laughs> and I understand you're quite a good shot. Back where I come from, if you didn't shoot good, you didn't eat. <laughs> I see you shot only for food. Yes, sir. And you were very poor. Yes, sir. And then oil was discovered on your land, and you became very, very wealthy and moved to Beverly Hills. Yes, sir. But isn't it a fact, Mr. Clampett, that in spite of all your millions, you are still frequently seen carrying a gun? Yes, sir. You see, I just answer the question, yes or no. Do you, to this day, frequently carry a gun? Yes, sir. Were you carrying a gun the day you and your family crashed into the Johnsons? No, sir, and we didn't. That's crash. all. Thank you. Step down. No, sir. What do you mean, no, sir? I ain't all, and I ain't stepping down. Not until I've said a few things. Your Honor, I object. Now, Counselor, I have been very lenient with your conduct of this case, just as I have been very lenient with the conduct of the defendants. However, since Mr. Clampett here is the defendant and will bear the financial burden if judgment is against him, the court wishes to hear anything that is relevant and pertinent to this case. Yes, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Clampett, let us hear what you have to say. Well, thank you. Well, to begin with, there ain't nobody told the real story about what happened the day the Johnsons backed into us. I object, Your Honor. There has not been one shred of evidence or testimony supporting the allegation that my clients backed into the defendants. That is very true, Counselor. Perhaps now we might have it. <laughs> In the meantime, you be seated. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> uh, you may proceed, Mr. Clampett, realizing, of course, that you're still under oath to tell the truth. Well, Your Honor, I learned how to tell the truth so long ago, I reckon it's become a habit. And what with making a promise on the good book, I'm going to be extra careful. Proceed. Well, me and my family drove down to the bank. And then we drove on home, and that's the last we seen of the Johnsons, till somebody come to the house and told us to come down here to the courtroom. You may cross-examine. Well, that's quite a story you told, Mr. Clampett. Very simple and very sweet. Just the truth, like a promise? You're innocent of all these charges against you, aren't you? You've nothing to hide. That's right. Then why, Mr. Clampett, did you not answer the summons and complaints served upon you by the county marshal? Summons and complaint? That is right, complaint. This is a complaint, Mr. Clampett. In fact, it's a copy of the one delivered into your hands. Is that a complaint? It is. <laughs> Why didn't you answer it? Would you mind reading that first line there? <sighs> the people of the state of California send greetings to J.D. Clampett. That just didn't seem like no complaint to us. <laughs> As for Ant, well, Jethro says there's pretty near 18 million people in California. We just couldn't hardly see how we could get around to greeting them all back. <laughs> <laughs> Any further? 
further questions? <laughs> Not right now, Your Honor. Court will recess for 30 minutes, after which we'll hear final argument. I'd like to have a little conference with you and your husband before court resumes. Do you know where he is? Probably out calling his bookie. Uh, d <laughs> Doctor. Dr. <Doctor> Bookman. <laughs> Another thing, you told me your husband was a teetotaler. After lunch today, I thought I smelled liquor on his breath. That's his medicine for pain. <laughs> Mrs. Johnson, are you sure that you and your husband are telling me the complete truth about this case? What do you mean? Are you siding with that millionaire against us poor crippled people? Bodies all aching and racked with pain? <laughs> uh, it's just that Mr. Clampett's story was very convincing. And there were no witnesses to the accident. You told me we didn't need any witnesses. You said because they didn't answer the complaint, we didn't have to bring in any witnesses. Uh, but you mean you, uh could have brought in witnesses. All you want. <laughs> All rise. Counsel for the plaintiffs ready for his final summation? Uh, yes, yes, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, sir, uh, Mr. Judge, uh, <laughs> could I say something that might save us all a lot of time? Do you have any objections? Uh, no, no, Your Honor. Proceed, Mr. Clappett. Uh, well, sir, uh, if it's all right with you, I'd like to go ahead and uh, give that $100,000 to the Johnsons. Do you admit the claims made by the Johnsons? Well, no, sir, it don't. But uh, he deserves the money, and I can afford to give it to him more if he needs it. <laughs> Would you mind telling the court why you think he deserves it? Well, Your Honor, I got a daughter here, Ellie May, and I uh, reckon she means more to me than just about anything in the world. And during the recess, when uh, I seen Mr. Johnson with his daughter and seen how much he loved her, just like I do Ellie May, well, Kind of tore at my heart. What daughter? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> there he was in his wheelchair in that little room across the hall, and in walked this beautiful girl with the long red hair, and I knowed right away she was his daughter because she walked up to him and she says, How's it going, Daddy? <laughs> Judge, Your Honor, with no nurse to help him, that brave man got to his feet and stood there straight and tall so she wouldn't see he was suffering. And he hugged her and he kissed her. And right then is where I found out she was a heap like my daughter. Find a critter. Because he said, Marsha, darling, when I get this hundred thousand, I'm going to take you to Mexico and we're going to watch the ponies run. <laughs> Development surprised me as they did you. I asked to be relieved from the case at once. Request granted. This court finds for the defendant. Bill, bring those plaintiffs back into this court immediately. They're to be held for perjury.